You gave us most impressive. The opposite of that is least impressive. Who was the least impressive today for you? Seems like you might have a long list here. You can go with a couple if you want, Grant. It is no, your show. one guy. Okay. And I went with most impressive was the starting corners, least impressive, the backup corner. Mm. Ambry Thomas. What happened? Now, it's funny. Like, he got – he really started off poorly. Well, I'll say what he did today. He got smoked by Ayuk twice. And then he gave up like a 50-yard touchdown. You, it was either a 50-yard catch or, you know, a 50-yard catch and run for a touchdown to Malik Turner. And what's crazy is like Emory Thomas had him. He's in perfect position, perfect coverage, stride for stride. He just jumped too early. You know, can you picture that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. His times yes. in, misses yeah. It. And then Malik Turner jumps and catches it. It's like, and that's my issue with Embry. Every Like when he was getting roasted last year and then he would make some strides and do better, people would be like, well, he's in perfect position. He's right there. Yeah, but that's only part of the job. The other part is how are you at the catch point? And to me, that's what separates first round picks from third round picks. There's a lot of good athletes who can run with, with wide receivers, but can you also do something with the ball at the cash point? And if he could, he would have been a first round pick running a four, three at six, one like that. But I don't think he can, he couldn't much last year. He had that pick week 18 on that underthrown ball from Matthew Stafford. But today he just got whooped by Malik Turner and it's disappointing. And it's like, you can't, you can't depend on a corner who gives up big plays like that. And it's a good thing they got Traverius Ward because they don't even test that guy. Yeah, absolutely. I think Traverius Ward is is obviously a great addition. But, you know, when you talk about a, a player like an Ambry Thomas going up against a guy like Turner, Turner's been in the league for a while, right? He knows how to keep his body right. He knows exactly what the competition level is at this point in the season. Mm -hmm. And he knows how to prepare for that. He also knows that he's fighting for a spot on this team. Ambry Thomas probably is not in that same situation. And being his second year, he maybe he's just not prepared, right? As prepared as he should be. And so it'll be interesting to see when pads pads come on, they get through some preseason games, just to see how maybe some of these guys like an Ambry Thomas progresses as they kind of learn the business, right? So I'm curious to see how but I'm rooting for Ambry Thomas. I think he showed a lot of flashes last year. To me, the improvement that he showed game by game. And I felt like people were picking out a play here and there where he got roasted by some really, really good players. But overall, if you watch every single snap, he looked pretty good in a lot of those games. So I, I hope he turns it around. I really do. To me, I feel like I've been covering this team since 2011. And mm -hmm. I feel like some, some things repeat themselves. To me, this is Chris Culliver again. Chris Culliver was a third round pick. Chris Culliver was a hell of an athlete. Six feet, 190 ran a four three hell of an athlete and he he could really play press man coverage and mirror really good receivers around the you know down the field it's just when the ball got there he didn't know where the hell it was he couldn't find it with gps i mean he could there was no way and it's just at first you know he looked like he was pretty good but once he started getting burned down the field and it happened in the super bowl you lost all your confidence it was over so like that's the problem with amory like how many more of these big plays is he going to give up before he goes in a shell Last year, he got more confident as the year went on. This year, he's going to be on the bench. It's going to be – I mean, he won't be giving up big plays. So, he just has to find the ball. You're right there. You're there. You're in better position than the wide receiver half the time. Just calm down. I don't know what to tell him, man. It's, it seems like a tough a tough trait to coach. Maybe you can. And, and I'm interested to see how it plays out, too, because I really felt like when they signed Traverius Ward – that they had a plan of saying, hey, Mosley's probably not going to be here long term. We had him in a two year deal. Ambry Thomas after this year is going to be the guy ap opposite of Traverius Ward. I think that that's the plan. So hopefully they're they're able to use that and let that play out. I'm not so sure about that. Um, yeah, I'm just going to say that uh, maybe Emmanuel Mosley might play his way into this team long term because he's good. He's very good. But I think he might play his way out. I mean, if you look at his numbers, he sure. really has been locked down. He's been locked down. Like honestly, man to man, one on one, him against Ayuk, that's not a that's not an advantage for the offense. I'm sorry. Crazy. Mosley's a good ass player. Sorry. But sorry. Listen, I mean, Mosley. Mosley was the guy last year. I, you know, you probably don't remember, but when we were talking about guys that 
we really were excited about going into training camp last year. Mosley was the name that I gave. I said, you need to stop playing with Mosley because they were flirting with bringing in an old head, somebody like Sherman. And I was like, just give this man the job already. He's that good. And he's really shown it. He's, he's extremely, extremely impressive. His numbers were really good last year. It's just that he yep. played like the softest coverage ever. It wasn't necessarily his fault. It's what D'Amico asked him to do halfway through the season. It's what he asked all the corners to do this year. I think they're going to be much more aggressive. And if he can pull that off without committing a bunch of penalties, giving up big plays, and if he can intercept two, three passes, he's going to get the bag. So root for him. I'm a Mosley fan. Yep. Kenneth Ruoff says, love Grant after dark. Thank you. It's Niners after. It's Grant and Jesse after dark. Although <laughs> Jesse doesn't cur curse like me. Grant, do you think Jennings balls out for a contract this year? Thanks for being raw, man. You know, Jennings interesting. Uh, I don't think he's going to get a ton of money. He is a slot receiver. He's not beating anyone outside. He's uh, in that sense, he's a little bit more limited than even Kendrick Bourne. He's very specific to one one role. So we'll see. I mean, if he catches 15 touchdown passes this year, maybe some team will overpay him. But I think he's a pretty limited player. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be hard. You got to remember, Trey Lance isn't going to come in and start throwing the ball 40 times a game. That's just not what they're going to do this year. So. I would be hard pressed to find enough targets for him to really go out and break the bank next year. Michael Mox says, sorry if I'm super out of touch on this, but on the topics of cornerbacks is Verrett back, uh, back in the sense that he's on the roster, but he hasn't started practicing yet. I don't know if he'll ever practice again. We'll see. Um, so far, my internet's doing pretty good. Knock on wood. <laughs> yeah, God, you so just far. jinxed it. That's oh, good. I, look, you got blurry already. Right.